You guys, spooky season is right around the corner and I am so excited for it. Welcome back to my channel. And um, today we're gonna to be talking about witchy reads for spooky season because it is coming. I am the fall queen. I love fall. I love everything to do with fall. Call me basic, whatever. I don't care. Fall is my jam and I really wish <laughs> that it was around longer. I live in Canada and we do not get a long fall at all. It's like a couple of weeks. So I like to start celebrating fall as soon as September hits. Like September 1st, summer, goodbye. Hello fall. Bring me all the pumpkin things. Bring me all the leaves. I'm just, I, I can't get enough of it. <laughs> and one thing that I absolutely love to read in this season is all things witchy. I don't know why, but to me, witches just encompass the Halloween season. I just, every time I read a witchy sort of book, anything to do with witches, I love it. I don't know why, maybe I was a witch in a past life. I actually am pretty sure that I was but that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> I just love anything to do with witches and I have quite a few favorite witchy reads that I would love to share with you. I'm gonna share five with you today. Let me know in the comments down below if you'd like another video on witchy reads and um, I can always do part two because I definitely have more. So all right, of course, as I'm filming this, there's some kids playing basketball outside. So I apologize if you can hear laughing, screaming, ball bouncing, I, I apologize. It's my only time to film this video, so we're just gonna roll with it. And the first book that I'm gonna talk about is one of my new favorite books, possibly of all time. I love it so much, and it is extremely underrated. I can almost guarantee you haven't heard of this because it only has, I think, like maybe 600 and something reviews on Goodreads, and it really, please read this book. It is so good. Um, and that is A Dark and Starless Forest by Sarah Hallowell. First of all, things that I love about this book, number one, fat girl protagonist. And after I, as I was reading this book, I realized I don't think I have ever read a book where the protagonist is a fat girl. And like, I mean, you know, like I want to be represented too. And this book definitely did this. This book has so much representation. It is awesome. There is trans representation, um, lesbian representation bisexual representation what else um adoption uh there's even more i'm i, I think oh asexual representation it has everything <laughs> it has everything it is awesome it's so good that's my number one favorite thing about it but Let's not just stop there. Let's read the synopsis and just tell you why this is so, such a good book. Derry and her eight siblings live in an isolated house by the lake, separated from the rest of the world by an eerie and menacing forest. They know it's for their own good. After all, the world isn't safe for people with magic, and Derry feels safe, most of the time. Until the night her eldest sister disappears. When a second sibling goes missing, feeling safe is no longer an option. Derry will risk everything to protect the family she has left, even if that means returning to the forest that has started to call to Derry in her missing siblings' voices. As Derry spends more time amidst the trees, her magic grows more powerful, and so does the darkness inside her, the viciousness she wants to pretend doesn't exist. But saving her siblings from the forest might mean embracing the darkness, and that just might be the most dangerous thing of all. I can't tell you guys how much I love this book. It really encompasses sisterhood and, you know, protecting your family and the lengths that you would go to to protect your family from anything. Um, you know, and also that love is not, it doesn't end with people that you're blood related to. Um, Derry's siblings are all adopted and the love that she feels for them and just, the fact that she feels she needs to protect them and figure out what is going on. Um, it was just heartwarming to see and she will go to any lengths to protect her siblings, which is amazing. Um, as a mother of two sons, I want them to feel that way for each other. You know, I want them to grow up being there for each other and protecting each other um, long after I'm gone. So I just loved that. <laughs> I loved so much about this book. Like I said, it's completely underrated. And um, I really think like, there's just so many magical elements in here. And 
we have this the forest that kind of surrounds the house there's a magical forest and just the way things are written like fairy lights and um you know just just the atmosphere really really i loved it and the fact that these girls are all they're all magic in different ways they all have different powers and they're all trying to grow their powers and they're all trying to learn from each other and help each other um amidst a a caretaker who is unpredictable and we're not quite sure right from the beginning what to think of him i flip-flopped on him throughout this entire book i kind of had a feeling of what was going to happen towards the end but i really went back and forth the whole time um flip-flopping on who the villain was and what was going on in this story so really really good there's a mystery in there women empowering themselves with magic and i just it was so so good please read it you guys please read it i did get this one off of book outlet so i mean that's always good too they're cheap right you guys spooky season is right around the corner and i'm so excited for it next is a book that i talked about on here before and that is spellbook of the lost and found by moira fowley doyle and uh <laughs> This one I wanted to read so bad. I had been listening to Haley and Bookland talking about this like a few years ago and I saw the cover and I just had the cover image burned into my mind and I wanted to to uh, read the book but I never wrote it down or anything like that but I always came back to thinking about that image in my mind and finally on Book Outlet one day I found this book. I couldn't ever remember what it was called and um, I was so excited to get it and it turns out it's a fall witchy read that is just awesome um and again the thing i think maybe the thing that i really love about witchy books is that a lot of the times it focuses on women empowering women which is just amazing and we need to do more of in this world um one stormy summer in a small irish town things begin to disappear it starts with trivial stuff hair clips house keys socks but soon it escalates to bigger things a memory a heart a classmate Olive can tell that her best friend Rose is different all of a sudden. Rose isn't talking, and Olive starts to worry she's losing her. Then, the diary pages written by someone named Laurel begin to appear all over town, and Olive meets three mysterious strangers, Ivy, Hazel, and her twin brother Rowan, secretly squatting in an abandoned housing development. The trio are wild and alluring, but they seem lost, too, and like Rose, they're holding tightly to painful secrets. When a tattered, handwritten spell book falls into the lives of these six teenagers, it changes everything. The spell book is full of charms to conjure back that which has been lost, and it lists a part for each of them to play in the calling. It might be their best chance to set everything back to rights, but only if they're willing to pay the price. Told in the alternating voices of Olive, Laurel, and Hazel, this story lies at the intersection of the real and the magical, the tragic and the miraculous, the bone-chilling and the tender. So ended up being a really good twist in this book as well and um i just like i said i like the imagery of like women being wild and being able to do things you know being able to do magical things and protecting each other and just i just love all of that so the last physical read that we're going to talk about before we before we move into two audiobooks that i've read um this is a newer book and that is melissa albert's new book our crooked hearts and I did not know that this one was going to be a witchy read. I was actually really surprised once I started reading it that it is about witches. And um, we have a Bestie Book Talk or Bestie Book Babble coming very, very soon. Um, on my old booktube channel, my one of my best friends, Georgia, and I used to do a lot of Bestie Book Talks. We're going to be calling them Bestie Book Babble coming up soon. Uh, we would each read, read the same book and we'd get together, sit down, kind of like our own little mini book club, film it and get your guys's take on it in the comments. So that's going to be coming very, very soon. Um, as I'm filming this, I'm going to be going to her place to film this wrap up with her in like less than two weeks. Uh, she lives about three hours away from me. So I'm really excited. And I haven't seen her since the beginning of the pandemic also. So I'm really excited to see her. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I digress. <laughs> Secrets, lies, super bad choices, and witchcraft. The suburbs right now. 17 year old Ivy's summer break kicks off with an accident, a punishment and a mystery. A stranger whose appearance in the middle of the road in the middle of the night heralds a string of increasingly unsettling events. As the days pass, Ivy grapples with eerie offerings, corroded memories and a secret she's always known, but there's more to her mother than meets the eye. The city, back then. 
Dana has always been perceptive and this summer she turned 16 with the help of her best friend and ambitious older girl. Her gifts bloom into a, into a heady fling with the supernatural. As the trio's aspirations darken, they find themselves speeding toward a violent breaking point. Years after it began, Ivy and Dana's shared story will come down to a reckoning among a daughter, a mother, and the dark forces they never should have messed with. So I don't want to give too much away because like I said, we're going to be doing a bestie book battle on this very, very soon, but I just finished this one like minutes ago. <laughs> And I'm just going to say that I really, really enjoyed it. Um, Melissa Albert is the author of the Hazelwood series, which I also really enjoyed. She has kind of a way of writing characters that you're not really sure how to feel about. And I didn't particularly like the main character in the Hazelwood series. This one, I like her a little better. And I'm the type of person I have to like the character that I'm reading for some reason. I just have to be able to sympathize with her a bit and like her in order for me to really get into the book. And... Um, I'll just say that this one did that for me. All right, so now heading into the audiobooks, we are going to talk about Sawkill Girls by Claire Legrand. Beware of the woods and the dark, dank deep. He'll follow you home. He won't let you sleep. Who are the Sawkill Girls? Marion, the new girl. Awkward and plain, steady and dependable, weighed down by tragedy and hungry for love she's sure she'll never find. Zoe, the pariah, luckless and lonely, hurting but hiding it, aching with grief and dreaming of vanished girls. Maybe she's broken, or maybe everyone else is. Val, the queen bee, gorgeous and privileged, ruthless and regal, words like skill and eyes like knives, a heart made of secrets and a mouth full of lies. Their stories come together on the island of Sawkill Rock, where gleaming horses graze in rolling pastures and cold waves crash against black cliffs, where kids whisper at the legend of an insidious monster at parties and around campfires where girls have been disappearing for decades, stolen away by a ravenous evil no one has dared to fight until now. So this book I originally thought was just a thriller and I was very, very surprised that it actually is a witchy thriller, <laughs> which is awesome. I did not know that going into it and I was very, very pleasantly surprised by it and kind of the turns that it takes. The witchiness doesn't really come into play until to later on in the book. Um, I don't think that's giving anything away, but, um, it's not just, it, it's a thriller. It is about missing girls and people killing missing girls or some sort of, there's a reason why the girls keep going missing. Um, but it does kind of involve, it evolve into a witchy story. So I'm just going to leave it there because I don't want to spoil you at all, but it's good. And the last book that we are going to talk about today is actually a series and it is a cozy mystery series that once again I've mentioned on my channel before and that is the Betwixt and Between series by Dorinda Jones. This is actually the first cozy mystery series I've ever read and what a way to start it out because <laughs> let me tell you this is a really really good one. There's some spiciness in it and I've referred to it in past videos as like the grown-up Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Divorced, Desperate, and Destitute Former restaurateur Defiance Daphne Dane finds out she has been be bequeathed a house by a complete stranger. She is surprised, to say the least, and her curiosity gets the better of her. She leaves her beloved Phoenix and heads to one of the most infamous towns in America, Salem, Massachusetts. She's only there to find out why a woman she's never met would leave her a house, a veritable castle that has seen better days. She couldn't possibly accept it, but the lawyer assigned to the case practically begs her to take it off her hands, simply because she's scared of it. The house, the inanimate structure that, as far as Daphne can tell, has never heard a fly. Though it does come with some baggage, a pesky neighbor who wants her gone, a scruffy cat who's a bit of a jerk, and a handyman bathed in ink who could moonlight as a supermodel for GQ. She decides to give it three days, and not because of the model. She feels at home in Salem, safe. But even that comes to a screeching halt when people begin knocking on her door day and night, begging her for help to locate their lost objects. Come to find out, they think she's a witch. And after a few mysterious mishaps, Daphne's beginning to wonder if they're right. This one is so fun. There is definitely a, what's the word? I guess sort of a smutty side to it. There is a romance that it is on the smutty side. We'll just say that. So if that's not your thing, um, maybe this one's not for you, but it's funny, it's fun, it's spooky in all the right ways. There's mysteries, there's a mysterious, Thing going on that she kind of has to solve. I mean, it's a cozy mystery, right? So you have all the elements of the cozy mysteries. You have the small town, you have the yummy food, 
you have a really interesting romance. Um, in this one, you have best friends that are there helping each other. Um, once again, women helping women. Love that so much. Um, and yeah, it's just, it was a really, really, really fun read. And it's a whole series. There is three books and one coming out very, very soon. I don't know, the, the date keeps getting extended. I pre-ordered it on Audible and it just keeps, it was supposed to be out in January. It keeps getting extended. So I don't know when it's coming out, but hopefully soon because I'm really excited to read the fourth book. But anyways, those are five witchy reads for the spooky season that I absolutely love, that I think you will love too and will put you right in the fall spirit of things. So I hope you guys are having an awesome day. Let me know in the comments, as always, if you've ever read any of these books and what your thoughts on more, and I'll see you in my next video.